Hello friends here I am with next part of this story. I hope you all like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's start the story with Samurai Naruto is an orphan in Azushi Akakir. With the second shinobi war on the rise, Naruto will go to any lengths to protect the ones he loves. Main pairing Naruto x Kashina. Chapter 3 Naruto the silver locket Kashina had given him. Its smooth texture in the picture inside already easing his worried mind. Kashina truly meant everything to him. Naruto wasn't naive. Most people become shinobi willingly. He could only imagine what the future had in store for him. I only have two days left with them. It's cruel a world. It's only been around two years since I've met them and it's been the best years of my life so far. He thought ruefully a sad smile on his face as he reminisced the wonderful memories. The ring he had given to Kashina had belonged to his mother. It was one of the few possessions he had that belonged to his parents. He didn't know very much about either of them, assuming they loved him like any normal parent with their child. Yet they were gone, his mother passed away shortly after his birth, and his father died as a shinobi. Pushing aside the depressing thoughts, he needed to be strong for them. If he showed any signs of weakness they wouldn't be able to stop worrying about him. Getting ready for the day, he put Kashina's locket around his neck and tucked it under his shirt and made his way out of his room. Overlooking the 47 candidates go through the rigorous training regime, he was having second doubts about his decision. So many young faces that were destined for the hell that was war. Some wouldn't survive the augmentations and the others that hadn't maybe crippled or die. Having second thoughts again? Questioned a soft voice. Turning around Kenshin saw his wife Hoshiko giving him a warm smile with two cups of tea. Handing him one of the cups he took a sip and gave her a small smile back. What's troubling you dear? She continued. What am I doing? From a young age, we're taught to take care of our family. This village is my family, yet so are these kids. I'm condemning them to a fate most Jonin wouldn't want any part in. He finished bitterly, a tart sigh escaping his lips. You're having second doubts from your conversation with the Kane Chan? She questioned, her inquisitive eyes reading him like an open book. She's the only one who can do that he thought while laughing softly. Before his expression turned a little serious, of course I am, she's right. My duty to the village is to protect it no matter the cost. What are 48 lives to 2000? He inquired softly, his shoulders slumped, and his green eyes holding nothing but sadness. Our daughter thinks I'm a monster he finished, his voice filled with regret. Patting him on the back trying to console him you know where she gets her anger from, give her time. The way you've described Naruto I'm sure he'll make it through, though you should give the candidates a choice for the augmentations. She finished sagely, a tranquil smile on her face. With a training regimen like this, they'll make exceptional ninja anyways. Only a training addict like you could come up with something like this. She finished smacking her forehead shaking her head in disbelief, trying to light up her husband's dejected mood. Laughing at her jab before his response, I don't know what I would do without you he finished giving her a soft kiss on the cheek, his dejected mood gone with the wind. I'll take your advice about the augmentations as well with her nod of agreement they just sat there in comfortable silence her head resting on his arm, while they just watched the children train. Naruto was watching little Masaki while Kashina was helping Akane make lunch. Misaki was everyone's little bundle of laughter. She had started walking not too long ago and ever since then she's been a bundle of disaster. Akane had said she was just like Kashina at that age. Much to Kashina's ire in Naruto's laughter. Ever since the kiss they've been much closer. Though they decided to keep the kisses on the lips for when they were older. For now, they just chose to kiss each other on the cheek. Whenever they were close to each other, they were always holding hands and talking. Ba ba ba, nah. Babbled little Misaki since he was spacing out in his thoughts. Since she was so young she called him Na, which he didn't have a problem with. Little Misaki was in a cute little wind piece that was a soft purple color. Naruto assumed it was awfully comfortable as she seemed to favor that one piece to the other ones, making funny faces and tickling her stomach to make her giggle. Naruto can bring Misaki Chan and come have lunch with us. Hollered a cane from downstairs. Let's go Masaki chan taking her up in his arms he carefully walked down the stairs with her. Coming into the dining room Naruto strapped Misaki into her height chair and helped set up the table for lunch. What are we having for lunch Kashina chan, a cane obo san? Asked Naruto with a gleam in his eyes. The food they cooked had always been exceptional. Lately, a cane had been spacing out. After lunch, 
He was going to talk to her and see if he could do anything about it. With a small smile, she responded with a calm tone, We're not having anything too heavy for lunch. Just miso soup and rice. Once everything was said everyone gave a small chorus of itadakamasu and ate making small talk here and there. Akane Obo-san, lately I've noticed that you've been spacing out a lot. Is there anything I can do? Questioned Naruto quietly with a worried expression. A smile on her beautiful face. Ever since all this business with his conscription they had gotten considerably closer. You're too smart for your own good sometimes her smile faltering a little bit, her eyes showing sadness. I can't help but feel responsible for your conscription, maybe if you hadn't shown such exceptional prowess, Tusama wouldn't have selected you. Her smile was gone and a frown on her beautiful face, her eyes teary. You call me your end, but I can't even protect you from what's about to happen. Her knuckles white from gripping the sides of her pants. I won't lie to you Naruto-kun, being a shinobi is despicable. You'll have to kill people's family and lovers. Sure you'll be strong enough to protect the ones you care about, but can you live with yourself? She finished sniffled out. Feeling his heart clench at the sight of one of his most important people crying. He was by her side in a matter of seconds. She was still a little taller than him but it didn't matter. He just wrapped his arms around her to try to provide some form of comfort. She was just so scared for him. No child should have to see war at such a young age. Yet here was this boy she loved dearly, about to be sent into the thick of it. She couldn't help but despise her father for such a rash decision. A cane had always made him feel safe from the time he met her. To see her this worried for him only bolstered his anxiety for what may happen. He had to be strong though, stealing his heart before he spoke. Akane Obo-san, you don't have to worry about me so much. I went through your hellish training. But I can't say I'm not afraid either. Every living thing dies someday. Whether it's today or tomorrow, it comes for everything. Taking a deep breath and giving her a small smile before continuing. I'll fight fate itself if that's what it takes to get back to you guys. You're my family. If going to war keeps people from coming to hurt you, it's a small price. I'm just some orphan. You didn't have to accept me into your family. Yet you did so, you showed me what it's like to feel the love of a mother. For that, I'm eternally grateful, I'll do whatever it takes to come home to my family. He finished giving her a full-blown smell his violet orbs brimming with happiness and determination. She couldn't help but cry more and clutch him even harder. You better come back to us, if you don't Kashina and I will come for you in hell. A teary smile on her face while her eyes held a gleam that promised pain if he didn't keep his word, giving her a vigorous nod showing his agreement before gently slipping out of her embrace, it was getting hard to breath. You should reconcile with your father family shouldn't fight like that, can you do that for me, please? He pleaded with her. She just gave a small smile in return and a solemn nod. I'd do anything for you Naruto, I just can't help but feel angry at him for this. I understand. Just try though he gave her another hug before they continued on with their day. It was the final day before Naruto went away. They hadn't left the house for anything. Akane's delectable ramen broth was simmering away bound to be ready for dinner. They had brought many board games and movies to play and watch together. The home had been filled with nothing but laughter for hours. Akane's sorrowful state had been nowhere in sight. They had unanimously agreed not to talk about it and just enjoy the moment together. That's before little Masaki did something that made everyone joyous. She started taking her first steps, she's been crawling for months and taking little steps with them helping her along. Kashina was bubbling with joy. Akane had a bright smile on her face as Masaki started walking towards her while babbling mama all along the way. Naruto just had a small smile on his face, this was what he wanted to protect, and he would be damned if he let anything happen to them. Being spaced out in his thoughts he didn't realize Masaki had walked in front of him and was babbling at him. Oh, you're just too cute picking her up and making funny faces at her adding to the joy of everyone around him. Let's take a family photo chirped Kashina with a gleeful expression on her face. I'll go get the camera, be right back. Yelled Arcane excitedly, a bright grin gracing her gorgeous face. Posing for the picture, Akane had a shadow clone take the picture of her holding Masaki. While Naruto was between her and Kashina. His arm around Kashina while Akane had an arm wrapped around his neck holding him and Kashina close. After the picture, there was a knock at the door. Akane created another shadow clone to go accomplish a task elsewhere. While Naruto went to answer the door. 
Opening the door it was Kashina's grandfather and a woman that looked just as beautiful as a cane. A cane was behind him almost immediately. Ka-chan, Tusama what are you doing here? She gritted out while crossing her arms, stepping in front of Naruto. We've only come to talk if you allow us politely requested Hoshiko, her eyes showing sadness. A cane gave a quick glance to Naruto to find him giving her a smile and a quick nod. You promised didn't you? He said giving her a gentle smile, turning around and heading back to the living room leaving her alone with her parents at the doorway. Looking at his retreating form before turning back to her parents she gave a small smile, he probably assumed something like this would happen. Stepping to the side of the door her smile faltering for a moment, before remembering what Naruto had asked of her. We're having ramen for dinner if you two stay long enough, come on I'm sure Kashina will be happy to see you, she stated, shutting the door as they walked in. All three of them made their way to the living room to see what was happening. When they got their Kenshin, and Hoshika was fairly surprised to see Naruto and Kashina have Masaki walking between the two. That's when Kashina saw both of them and jumped up and started running towards them. Bachan, Gigi. She exclaimed a giddy smile on her face, wrapping her arms around Hoshiko. Hoshiko had a happy smile on her face as she returned the embrace. Kenshin settled for a small smile, at the sight. He loved all of his family dearly and would go the extra mile just to make sure they were safe. Turning to Naruto he noticed that he had thoughtful expression while Masaki was safely secured in his lap probably tired for all the walking she's been doing. Walking over to him and sitting next to him, taking a deep breath before speaking. You care about them more than any child your age should. He asked staring at the young boy beside him. Most individuals were slightly intimidated by him. Yet this boy who just reached adolescence stared back at him. Of course I do. They mean everything to me, they're the only family I have. He started turning his attention to Kashina and Akane who were chatting with Hoshiko. I'd do anything for them. He finished with conviction. You and I can definitely agree on that. He started staring at his family along with Naruto. I'm sure you're confused as to what your duties as a shinobi under my will be. You'll be protecting the clan and the villagers. Most of all you'll be protecting Kashina, Akane, and possibly Misaki but she's too young to find out just yet. At his questioning gaze. He continued, their chakra is very special, just like yours if my senses are right. They'll more than likely be targeted if this is ever found out. He finished seriously. If going into this program will help protect them, I'll be more than willing to go. I can't know I won't let anything happen to them. He finished with absolute certainty. I've decided that you'll be going into a separate division than the other candidates, you'll still train with them but they're only meant for defensive measures. They can go on the offense but I want them as a last resort just in case. Dinner's ready you two, let's go eat. Said a cane. Let's see if your ramen is as good as mine. Teased a giggling Hoshiko, her voice filled with confidence. They stared at each other sparks of lightning going between them. Before Kane huffed and went into the kitchen. Naruto just shit dropped at their actions. Ramen was pretty serious business he had found out. Chapter 4 It was time for Naruto to leave. Kashina had been avoiding thinking about it for the past week, just trying to enjoy every moment with him. Yet now the dreaded day had come. Her Gigi had come to pick Naruto up but he gave us some extra time to say goodbye. Naruto and Kashina's eyes met while he stood next to Kenshin and he walked up to her and gave her a hug. She couldn't stop the well of tears that had been brimming since she woke up, wrapping her arms around him. I'll miss you Naruto so much. The young redhead whispered her embrace becoming tighter around him. Naruto just closed his eyes while stroking her back trying to comfort her. Taking in her scent of sweet peas, he separated from her. He was going to miss her dearly. I'll come back to you I promise. As long as I'm alive you'll be part of me. Giving her a gentle kiss on the cheek. I know you will when you do come back just tell me everything. Promise? Cried the young girl. Crying her heart out into his chest. Naruto's heart lurched at the sight but he was going to keep the promise he made to himself long ago. To be strong enough to protect the ones he holds dear. That's the promise of a lifetime Kashina-chan. I'll say it again TTBANE if you look at any other girls when you're gone. She let the threat hang in the air, giving him a small smile. Her eyes reminded him of the cane whenever she was training them into the dirt, promising pain. Nodding vigorously you'll have nothing to worry about Kashina-sama as long as you don't look at any guys. He laughed out trying to lighten the mood. 
He knew she trusted him entirely about the matter at hand and so did he. Wait for me, okay? He finished softly. Baka T-T-B-A-N-E. Of course, I'll wait forever if I have to. She finished looking up at him with a smile on her face. Both she and Naruto were growing out of their childish stage and slowly but surely were on their way to adulthood. Turning to a cane who was holding Masaki, her crimson hair flowing in the wind, a gentle smile on her face while her beautiful eyes held sadness in them. Hand Masaki to Kashina, she took him into a gentle embrace. Well I'm sad you're going, I'm proud of the young man you've become, she stated. Nodding his head he embraced her in the hug as well. Thank you Akane Obo-san, I'll miss you and Misaki-chan a lot. Replied Naruto sounding more like a boy his age. Before you go I have something for you Naruto-kun. She said reaching behind her, pulling out a worn Hitai 8 that belonged to Azushi Akakir. This is the Hitai 8 I got when I graduated from the academy, I want you to have it. Her smile becoming even brighter at his expression. It looks so old, she must have taken really good care of it. He thought before replying I'll wear it with pride a cane Obo-san, and I promise to give it back to you when I return. Said the young man, rubbing Misaki's stomach making her giggle he kissed her forehead. You'll be grown up when I see you again little Misaki-chan. He stated softly, Kashina's eyes once again connected with Naruto's, he gave her that smile that always pushed her worries away and made her feel butterflies. Yet now, she couldn't help but feel afraid. Sharing one last hug before Kenshin called out to them, Naruto it's time to go. He stated in a stern yet soft voice, Kenshin knew very well what they were going through. These were the kind of moments that they would recall on the entire time they were separated. Naruto nodded at him still embracing Kashina he whispered to her I'll come home don't worry. I love you. He whispered in her ear. Giving her a last chase kiss on her cheek he stepped away from her. Let's go Kenshin Sama voiced the young man. The older man nodded as he placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Using a Mizu Shunshin, water body flicker, they were both gone in an instant. Kashina couldn't help but put her face into her hands and cry. Naruto was going to be gone for years. Her JJ said they may be able to communicate sometimes but it wasn't guaranteed. Feeling a different hand on both of her shoulders she looked up to find her Bachan and Kachan staring at her with sympathetic smiles on their faces. He wouldn't want you to be sad for him Kashina, you need to be strong for him, stated her Bachan sagely. Nodding at her they all went inside. It was kind of chilly outside and they didn't want Misaki to catch a cold. Everything seemed like a blur to Naruto. While it was assumed that the Shunshin Jutsu, body flicker technique, was a teleporting technique. All it did truly was enhance a ninja speed, making it appear that they had teleported though it only worked in short distances or the amount of checker the user has. Blinking Naruto found himself in a military-style barracks, standing in front of a cot with a set of training clothes on it, the shirt has the number 7 on it. Looking around he saw many of the same cots though without any clothing on it. Turning around he didn't find Kenshin but a lone ninja. He estimated they stood around 5 feet 7 inches with a lean build, and their face covered by a mask. They had what he assumed was ANBU attire and armor on them. Are you just going to stand there all day? Get ready. Barked the Katsune Mask Ninja with a feminine tone. So this is how they operate. No questions asked. Just follow orders. Thought Naruto as he quickly dressed in the clothing provided to him. The masked shinobi had made a hand gesture towards him, indicating she wanted him to follow her. Outside outside there were 47 people if his quick count was correct standing in formation with the spot where he assumed he was meant to be. Many of the people in the formation were staring at him with confusion, irritation, and a couple with curiosity. Some of them had the famed crimson hair of the Uzumaki clan while a majority of them seemed rather mundane, looking like they had come from civilian families in Azushiagakir. Attention! shouted someone seeing as all of the other individuals in the formation immediately stood straighter, and turned to face the direction to where the voice had come from. Following what everyone else was doing they stood firm awaiting further instruction. At ease. Said the man, Naruto was able to see him now. He looked rather aged, compared to the others standing behind him. The only way he could tell was a set of grey hair on the man's head, all of them had their faces covered with masks just like the Kanoichi from the barracks. The older man's being a kuma, bear, mask as you all may have noticed. We have a new addition to the group, step forward cadet. The man barked at Naruto. Now Naruto typically wasn't a shy individual. 
but who wouldn't be when they were called out to stand in front of a large number of people. Complying with the men Naruto stood at attention. What's your name? Say it loud and proud now everyone needs to hear it. Said the man in an unyielding voice. The way he voiced it told Naruto that he needed to comply or face the consequences. My name is Naruto Uzumaki sir. Naruto had shouted still standing at attention. The men and the rest of the individuals behind him nodded at him accepting his introduction. A windy breeze passed by and Naruto realized just how cold it was here. The frosty air seeping into his lungs had started to wake him up. He was sure they were still on Azushi Agagir, but by Kami was it cold. No cadets on with calisthenics. Barked the aged man. Naruto sighed in happiness. Surely it wouldn't be that bad right? Akane's training had put him in the dirt. There wasn't any way possible this would be harder. 189 minus 190 minus 191 minus 192. Naruto had counted to himself, pausing for just a second to relax and take in a deep breath. By Kami was he wrong. These people were training them to the bone. Not a second later the Katsune Mess Ninja had struck him with a baton on the abdomen. Lurching in pain Naruto started to continue his such ups. 193 minus 194 minus 195 minus 196 minus 197,198 minus 199 minus 200. That's enough for now voiced one of the ninjas. Naruto started to look around, all of the other kids seemed pretty winded. He assumed that the workout had been upped. He had been given a week unlike the rest of the kids. So the kitty gloves are off so to say. The actual training for everyone here begins now. Was all he was able to think before the next set of instructions were voiced. Stand up now we have a short run and you can rest for a little bit. Said the older instructing ninja. Naruto and many of the others groaned. After that workout they wanted them to run some. They had done push-ups, knee bends, leg lifts. You name it they did it. They had been provided some warm, salty water, but to many, it was the best water they had ever had in a while. At least it's a short run. Naruto thought. Let's get going. Voiced the Katsune Mast Kanoichi from the barracks. She had been paying close attention to him. Now that he noticed it, certain groups of his peers had a certain ninja following them assisting the older shinobi in his instructions. At least it'll be a short run. Thought Naruto as he started following along. It wasn't a short run. The short run had consisted of running a couple of miles. Naruto couldn't give an exact amount as he was exhausted even with his reserves. The people instructing them though didn't even seem winded as if this was more a warm-up. At least we're all sitting down now. He thought as he looked around, they were what he assumed was a classroom. Walking into the room she looked at all 48 individuals in front of her. These preteens were the ones that Kenshin had deemed viable candidates for her proposition. Though he made sure that the augmentations she had in mind were voluntary, thought it didn't matter, with how they were physically training them the children were going to become exceptional shinobi anyways. She was meant to train them in strategy, human physiology, and continue teaching them basic knowledge, mathematics, grammar, etc. While they beat the physical training and shinobi arts into them, she would be damned if they let their natural aptitude couldn't make the most of their abilities. Gesturing to some actual caretakers they ushered in and quickly did their job, giving the kids some cold water, and a snack, clearing her throat to gain their attention since they were all digging in and not paying anyone or anything any form of attention. Hello I'm Satomi Uzumaki, I'll be your instructor regarding your studies, and strategy. While they build your body, I will be molding your mind to improve your chances of success. If you're not interested you're more than welcome to continue your physical training. She stated in a strong voice, her eyes scanning all of them. Nodding her head when she saw that they were all intently listening to her. Figures most ninja would have a hard time keeping up to that training regime, except for joining in and up. She thought with a small smile. A rather pretty lady walked in and she was around 5 feet 5 inches if his estimate was correct. While she was pretty he would admit she didn't have that regal beauty that a cane had. That was beside the point though as she wasn't finished with her introductory speech. All of you have been called upon to protect the Uzumaki clan and Azushi Agakir inter-villagers. The road ahead may be a long and rough one, but I'm sure all of you will do just fine. Please refer to me as Satomi-sensei if you need a question just raise your hand. She finished while looking over all of them. Hi Satomi-sensei. Kuras Naruto and the rest of the cadets. Naruto and the rest of his peers listened closely to her. 
he would sit through the most boring lectures if it bought him a break from what those shinobi and kanoichi called basic training. She had begun her lecture about a certain subject with all of them listening to her intently. Time skipped one hour honestly, Naruto and the others wished her lecture lasted longer. Not just so they could have a break, her lessons were actually enthralling. She kept everyone captivated about her stories, the favorite being where the second Hukich had sacrificed himself to save his team. While it was, in reality, sad whenever someone died, it was the harsh truth of the world they were being thrust into. Kill or be killed. She also pushed any naive thoughts of honor in the shinobi world. From what she experienced most of the genin from some villages, mainly the more pacifist villages such as Konea, believed that there was some semblance of honor in the shinobi world. They told their enemies how their techniques were unstoppable while revealing how their jutsu worked, and how it was impervious to anything they could do. While they continued to yap on and on, a smart ninja would take the time to analyze this newfound information and use it against them, resulting in the loss of the battle. What astounded her sometimes was her clan, the Uzumaki clan. While out in the elemental nation some people did have abnormal chakra. Some individuals in the Uzumaki clan and that's the end for class now all of your instructors are waiting outside, have fun! She chirped with a smile on her face. Most of the cadets grown Naruto included, sure they weren't lazy yet they had to run all the way back to the barracks now. They all made their way down the stairs and got into their marching formation. That's when the Katsune masked Kanoichi appeared in front of him and gestured to him and two others a boy and girl. Following her, Naruto looked around everyone was being separated into squads of three. For the remainder of your time here the individuals in front of you will be responsible for you and your training. Good luck! Said the Kuma masked ninja, giving them a salute which was reciprocated by the numerous masked instructors. With that, he vanished in a shunshin. Let's get somewhere a little quieter said the Kanoichi, gesturing for them to follow her. They all dashed through the woods and sat down when they were far enough away from the main group. Naruto looked at the other two cadets with him. The girl had blue hair that reached the nap of her neck, and gray eyes that seemed pretty vibrant. She was pretty but definitely not as pretty as Kashina. The other boy beside him wasn't as exotic as him or the girl. He had brown hair, brown eyes, and only just a little shorter than him though he seemed pretty tensed. Clearing her throat the instructor sat down across from the three of them. Removing her kitsune mask Naruto saw another beautiful woman with scarlet hair that framed her right eye, while its length reached the top of her back. Alluring green eyes that showed immense intelligence, and to be quite frank she didn't seem a day over twenty. Since she's so young she must be immensely skilled. Also, why does it seem that I'm being surrounded by so many beautiful women, I don't get it thought Naruto as the wind shuffled some leaves around them, the soft breeze doing nothing but making her seem much prettier. My name is Mayumi Uzumaki, you'll refer to me as Mayumi Sensei when speaking to me. Since we're a team we will be introducing ourselves to each other. Your name, likes, dislikes, and plans for the future. She finished with a straight face while staring at the three. Well, I guess I'll go first, I've told you my name already, my likes are reading, and training. My dislikes are fangirls. She said looking at the only girl on the team. Dreams for the future, HMMM I don't know just yet. She finished with a small smile. Naruto and the two others just looked at each other. Shrugging Naruto decided to go first out of the three. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, I love my family, I just want to protect them. I dislike people who don't appreciate their family. Besides that, I don't have many other dislikes or likes. My plan for the future is to get back to my special someone, he said while rubbing the smooth metal surface of the locket. Hello, my name is Hisana Kunai. My likes include swimming, my family, and flowers. My dislikes are those who pick on others, and assholes for the lack of a better word. My dream for the future is to open up my own flower shop, voiced the now named Hisana with a smile. Hi, my name is Ken. My likes include reading at the library, my family, and the librarian. My dislikes are bullies and arrogance. My dream is to have a family and grow old. He finished with a smile small, looking at the ground not knowing how anyone felt about him. While we're all pretty similar, I agree with all of you including you Mayumi Sensei. Let's all get along from here. Voice Naruto with a grin, the breeze blowing through his hair making him appear more handsome. Alright if you think that warm up was rough, it's time for my training. She laughed out. A sinister smile on her face sending shivers down Naruto, Hisena, 
and Ken Spines. I hope you all like the video. And if you all want the next part of this video please like the video and comment 3 hearts. Please subscribe to my channel so whenever I upload a video you will notify.